Uh, up next, uh, Damian Sheridan is going to read some paranormal. Well, thank you very much. As I said, my name is Damian Sheridan. I have to apologize. I'm uh, now into day six with my arthritis. My voice isn't, isn't exactly up to par right now. I have some. Uh, I have some anthologies and mini comics for sale over here on the late kids table. That's the one on the end there. Um, so, am I going commando on this mission? <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> Islands by David Sheridan. From out of a perfect misty morning, we strode forth. Spotter planes and boats reported first mistaking us for islands moving shoreward. Islands. There is joy in my heart for the residents of this volcanic chain. Blessed since Izanagi shook his jeweled spear and this great archipelago came to be. For many years, my comrades and I were alone on our island. Then a great war among the tribes of men spread across the sea to where we made our home. It roused us from our isolation. It was the first we realized we were not alone except for simple beasts. At first, we seethed with rage. Whenever men came to our home, they came as attackers. Our rage made us lash out and strike them back. We strode through their cities and countryside, thinking foolishly they would be easily destroyed, thinking arrogantly they were ours to destroy. Their attacks struck us like a thousand tiny barbs and stings. We struck back with fire, heat, and lightning, and also brute strength. For many years, things went on this way, for many years, our shame was wanton destruction of their lands. Eventually, very wise men among them sent missionaries to our remote island. These missionaries consulted with those who spoke for our moon-winged spiritual leader. Though the process was long, understanding was reached. In this way, we first learned of enlightenment we learned of four noble truths. We learned to let go of suffering and embrace those who, through their ignorance, had not come to accept our common brotherhood. When you become awake to your nature, it is time to share what you have learned in the hopes that others will find peace in the teachings and awaken to their nature as well. Now we have come shoreward to urge our brothers and sisters to open their eyes. For so many countless years, my heart knew only turmoil and my mind rallied and raged. I knew only panic and fear, rage and hate. I fought to become the ruler of my island and I bitterly fought on to retain my hold over those subjected to my dominance. When the missionaries came to speak with us, the way was hard and the mysteries did not soon reveal themselves to me. I felt fear when they tried to introduce me to a new way of thinking, of looking at our world and the universe around us. I felt shame when my ignorance and fear led me to irreparably damage our kind emissaries. I have since come to realize that all things live and die according to their nature and according to the time allotted them. This is unknowable. Though I was instrumental in their destruction, the lesson was not lost to me. Their places as bodhisattvas were secured, and their contribution led to the eventual awakening of me and my fellows from our remote island. Ten stories tall, I have etched into my sternum Fudo's Sanskrit seed symbol, Khan. I have dedicated myself to immovable, the Lord of Brightness. One of my compatriots has dedicated himself in a similar seed symbol to a Jita Bodhisattva. In the dark epoch where humanity is lost, cut off from wisdom, it is said the small king of brightness will lead the way. 
That is why he has had his sickle emblazoned across his chest in the crux between his three heads. His wise face is not sagely in the brightening sky. He seeks to banish ignorance from the hearts and minds of mankind with the pure white arcs of lightness and wisdom that zigzag from his three whiskered mouths. Around us are brothers and sisters with faces like thundering cloud banks, giant insects, sea leviathans, carapace-browed wonders surge forward into full view of those below. They shine and sparkle iridescent with the light of the sun playing off the water, cascading and drying from our massive backs. Each are adorned with the symbol of the Wisdom King, Knowledge King, or Mantra King they have come to accept in their heart as their spiritual guide. In the place of the spotter boats and planes, we are met on the shore with the mechanized tortoises of the ignorance we are here to free our human brothers and sisters from. The sky is torn with screaming locust sound of flying harbingers of the misguided. These release anger fuselages of missiles like swarms of wasps. In the way that I know how, I settle in amongst the war's delusion structures that will support me. It is similar to the lotus position. I, my tail I arc over me from left to right. I touch the earth with my clawed hand, and all becomes stillness around me. The fires of wisdom and redemption from loss and want flicker along the cragged sail fin of my back. I open my jaws, once so terrifying but now peaceful, and a great shimmering orange blossom of chrysanthemum leaps forward from within me to illuminate all this city of dread and misgivings. This hive of futile strivings spills forth around us. Like the weapons and warriors of Mara brought to bear against our enlightened Lord, the missiles and shells of the ignorant turn aside when flung our way and become like petals of the flowering lotus. I am Kurakawa, the bright sword of wisdom cutting through ignorance. I am the rope in Fudumayo's left hand, binding the demons that cloud the eyes of men. I throw open my jaws wide, and to the best of my ability, make the sound ah and ooh. These sounds are the beginning of all things and the end. They are the sound that makes up, they are the sounds that make up the sacred syllable om. I am awake. <coughs> Laryngitis, no less. Yeah. <laughs> 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 